Today I am doing my very first video blog for my blog Story Forward and the topic is going to be pulling off a no budget, no gear shoot 4,500 miles away from home. I'm trying to shoot right here because we have this really, really awesome leading line with this road going up to the hills above the mountains. Okay, so let me set the scene for you. I moved down to Peru about four months ago and I'm here to work on my Spanish. I'm here to do some volunteer work with various organizations around the city of Cusco. And the photography kit I brought down was a photography kit for photojournalism. It's a kit that includes basically one body, three lenses, and a reflector, not much else. I don't have things like soft boxes or um, like off-camera lighting, things you normally see on a commercial shoot. So that works fine when I'm out, uh, you know, in the villages around here shooting pictures of people doing lots of candids. It doesn't work so well when you get an assignment for a commercial shoot. And that's what happened a couple weeks ago. I get an assignment to shoot a bunch of Andean textiles for an NGO's product catalog. It's a two-day shoot, requires photographing things like blankets and pillows in a hotel, and then transitioning to shooting uh, models who are wearing ponchos, scarves, and things like that. The first thing I knew was I couldn't compromise on quality. I had to pull off great results with the minimalist kit I brought with me. And today I want to talk about some tips for working on a photo shoot where you need great results, but you have limited gear, limited budget, limited time. If you're thinking about heading down the minimalist route on a photo shoot, you really need to have all your other bases covered. If you don't have a budget, you don't have camera gear that would typically be on a commercial shoot, you need to do everything you can to make sure that you are completely prepared. For me, that meant I brought my wife along as an assistant because we work well together and I could trust her. I had the project manager from the NGO come along as my producer. That meant she found a couple of extra models, made the arrangements with the hotel, and made sure we got the car uh, that would take us to our location on the second day. When we were on set shooting the photos, she also acted as a second assistant, preparing the textiles, dressing the models, giving me a number board so we could make sure we knew what products we were shooting. The other thing I knew I needed to have nailed down was the location. We are now in a van heading out of Cusco towards the town of Maras, which is on a high plain above the Sacred Valley uh, here in Peru. I scouted this location a couple weeks ago because I was looking for a place to do a really great shoot. I'm really, really hoping it hasn't changed too much. The last time I was there, there were like these really amazing wheat fields and the glaciers had a lot of snow on them. So that's what we're hoping for. And uh, I guess we're, we're just gonna find out when we get there. My goal was to find a place where the setting sun would illuminate our models and put some really great side light on the mountains behind us. On the day of the shoot, I told the driver we were with to take us to three different places that I had previously scouted, but we ultimately ended up stopping at the first one because it, it looked great. It looked like what we were going for. Once we were on location, we had a couple of obstacles to overcome. The first one was this really harsh side lighting that we were getting on the faces and the bodies of the models. I could have placed the sun behind me, but that would have uh, taken the glaciers out of my shot. It wouldn't allow me to use the kind of composition I wanted to in the photo. So to compensate for that, instead of moving myself and my camera, I had my wife bring out a gold reflector to put some really nice fill light on the models. But even with that extra light, my highlights were completely blown. To make up for that, I underexposed the photos by about two stops. I decided the photos would look better if I shot them dark and brought them back up in post. That meant I had to shoot at an ISO of 100 to make sure those dark areas would be as uh, noise-free as possible when I brought them back in Lightroom. The second challenge we had to overcome was our models. All of them were volunteers and all but one of them had never done this kind of thing before. I think the most important thing when working with people on a photo shoot is to have fun and to make everyone feel like they're part of the team. You know, jump in, show your models what you're looking for, have some laughs, and don't make anybody do anything you wouldn't be willing to do yourself. Another way to keep your models happy is to work fast. Don't compromise on quality, but make sure you've prepared thoroughly enough so all you have to do is click the shutter once you're on location. To keep the shoot interesting, we went through a couple of setup changes. Our first shots were with the glacier in the background, and it was just, it was stunningly beautiful. 
But as the sun set, we turned to a nearby wheat field and got some really, really cool backlit photos. In this case, we still used our reflector to bounce the sun back onto the models, but we didn't have to underexpose as much. Okay, I think that's it. Uh. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Okay, we just wrapped our shoot up here above the Sacred Valley. We had some amazing light. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but the sunset over the glacier was just phenomenal. We had an amazing crew. Everybody back there was totally awesome. I think we got some great shots. Now we just gotta take it back home, do a little post-production, and uh, get this up online so people can buy all this really cool stuff that now I want. <laughs> So we are back from the photo shoot. I think it went really well. I hope it went really well. Uh, there's always a moment of fear right before you open up your photos that maybe something's out of focus or you didn't notice that there was like a huge speck of dust on your sensor or something crazy like that. But I'm really optimistic that it was actually a really good shoot. And I'm really excited to look at the photos. I'm gonna be downloading all my CF cards through a Firewire reader. I don't download from my camera because I've had some problems in the past uh, with photos getting left out or corrupted data, things like that. And so I use this Firewire uh, reader to help me uh, get the best photos possible, do it really quickly. And I'm gonna be importing uh, into Lightroom. The first thing I do is tell Lightroom to render full-size previews. That lets me check sharpness, focus, all the really, really small details that I'm gonna to need to check. <clears throat> On import, I apply a couple of settings. The first one I do is process and lens correction. It's a custom setting I made that uh, uses Lightroom 4's correction features to account for the lens I have on there. And the other thing it does is it makes sure the picture style I was using in camera, which is uh, Canon neutral, translates to Lightroom. The other thing I do is I apply a metadata preset of copyright, which is push puts my copyright on every photo. So all these photos look pretty good. I'm excited to see them. Let's hit import. The thing that I'm really interested to see on this shoot is how much of the shadows and darks we can bring back. I shot everything in RAW and everything at uh, ISO 100, so there'd be really low sensor noise because we were working with a really high dynamic range and wanted to make sure we could bring stuff back. Oh yeah, that's gonna be great. <laughs> 